Hey everybody, welcome to another installment of How Things Work on the railroad, specifically in the signal department. Uh, today I'm going to show you how hot box detectors, wheel scanners, and dragon equipment detectors work. Uh, I'm not going to get in as usual, I won't get into the circuitry or any of that, just show you the mechanics of how it works and the trickery. So. Uh, Come on along and let's check out a hot box detector and dragon equipment detector. Okay, we're out at the business end of the uh, hot box detector. Uh, the box there on the right is the hot box scanner. <clears throat> it scans the journals at the end of each train axle with an infrared beam. Uh, the, the, Axle has to be within certain parameters, can't be too cold, can't be too warm, can't be moving too slow. And uh, the box on the left is a hot wheel scanner. The difference between the hot wheel scanner and the hot box scanner is the hot wheel detector has a much higher tolerance. Hot wheels have a much higher tolerance than the uh, hot box, the journals. If there's a journal detected that's too hot, it will broadcast a message over the radio to the train. The train will have to stop. It tells it which axle it is. And the way it knows which axle the problem is is because of these two transducers right here. <clears throat> As the wheels pass over those transducers, it counts an axle. So the train crew knows exactly which axle to go back and look at. If everything appears to be okay, they can continue. If not, then they'll set that car out at the closest opportunity at a spur or into a siding. Uh, the hot wheel detector will not broadcast that message and will not stop a train. It will just put the information into the microprocessor unit in the house and store it. And uh, the signal operations will get that message and uh, pass that on to whoever they need to pass it on to. The uh, two, those two metal ramp looking things there are just pretty much that what they are. They're deflectors <clears throat> to keep any dragging equipment from uh, damaging the uh, scanners. And that is a dragging equipment detector. As I have tracking time here, I have permission to uh, foul this track. I do not have permission to foul that one. But this is a dragon equipment detector. A piece of dragon equipment hits it, moves it, and it will broadcast a message. It doesn't tell the train exactly which axle it is. It just says dragon equipment near axle such and such. That information is uh, all goes underground through all those fancy top secret things into this box here and into the house to be decoded and deciphered and broadcast over the air if needed and this these I should say are high wide detectors one for each track uh, they're here to ensure that the cars are not too high or too wide to fit safely through the tunnels between here and Bakersfield there's another one just like one of these uh, at Bina as you leave Bakersfield, it's on single track, so there's only one of them. But uh, these are the uh, emitters for the wide loads. They go up and they are received up there. And if something breaks those beams, it will stop the train. The same with those ones that are angled right there are to detect high loads. And same thing, if those beams are broken, they We'll broadcast a message, the train will have to stop, they'll have to come back here, and again, it's like the uh, dragger. It just tells them that the high or wide load is near axle such and such. They'll come back, make sure that everything's okay. Uh, sometimes, uh, who knows, the engineer could have his arm hanging out the window and set it off, or uh, sometimes there's a piece of wood or whatever hanging off the side of a car. That goes into that junction box there, goes underground, along with the, comes in here with all the stuff from the hot box and dragon equipment detectors. These boxes here are for the hot boxes and hot wheel detectors. 
and draggers. Uh, I'm not going to open those up. There's nothing in there but microprocessor circuitry and wires. And uh, one for track two, one for track one. These are the radios. So if there is a problem, that is what broadcasts the messages to the train. These are the uh, indicators and relays for the high wide detectors. If there is a problem with one of them, we can come in here and all these lights that you see right here right now are green. If we come in here and there's a problem, one of those lights will be red or two of them or how many ever. Uh, we have to test uh, this equipment regularly to test the hotbox scanners. We plug those charcoal lighter wands in, get them nice and hot, uh, take them out there, wave them across the top of the hotbox scanner and make sure that they're uh, seeing that heat and broadcasting a message. And we'll go out there and we will kick that dragger, make sure it's broadcasting. And we will break the beams on the high wide detectors and make sure they're broadcasting. And uh, we can plug our computers into these deals, one for the number two track, one for the number one track. We can plug our laptop computers into those and uh, simulate a train using a program on the computer. And that's how we pretend a train's going by when we test this. And so anyway, that is the uh, mechanical end and the electronic end of a hot box detector, dragon equipment detector, hot wheel detector, and high wide load detector. I would like to mention how far hot box detector technology has come since I came to work for the railroad. Uh, when I got here, hot box detectors, they were using the infrared beams already, but the, uh, the way they notified the trains of where the problem was, where there were these great big boards. I wish there were some around somewhere for me to, to put in this. I'm going to Google it and see if I can find any pictures of them. But anyway, they were big old black boards with digital displays on them. The numbers were about 18 or 24 inches in height. And uh, when a hot box was detected, the number of the axle came up on that board. And that was in the days of cabooses. And uh, the brakeman on the or the conductor they had them on both sides of the tracks and the, they would see uh, what number of axle it was and they'd stop and go back and look at that axle and back then they actually carried hot box coolant it was like uh, it was a in like a big giant silicone tube looking thing and I don't know what it was made of but the train crew would actually go back to the axle open the journal door and fill that journal with that hot box cooler and they continue on their way. They don't do that anymore. Uh, wasn't a very solid practice evidently. And prior to that, my old boss Bill Stoker told me they used a, a paint system that used gold paint. And when a hot box was detected, there was a uh, pneumatically operated paint nozzle that would squirt that gold paint onto the uh, affected journal affected axle but they said that evidently the it was hard to stay aimed if anything happened the paint would end up squirting up the side of cars and all kinds of crazy things so they stopped using that uh, we started using radio notifications in the early 90s maybe even the late 80s uh, I remember going out in the signal department, we installed the antennas and mounted everything. The communications department came out and put everything to work. That's pretty much the way things still work. But uh, anyway, a little short history on hot box detectors. Well, that will conclude the segment on hot box detectors, dragon equipment detectors, hot wheel detectors. And I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope you learned something that it was informative. Uh, I know a lot of people don't even know these things exist. They see stuff like this when they drive by it. They don't know what it is. And uh, a lot of people who do know what they are don't know how they work. So I hope uh, I hope I was able to explain it sufficiently or make sense to you. And I hope you'll uh, join.
join me for the next segment. I don't know what that's going to be on yet, but come up with something. So, everybody take it easy. If you have any ideas or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. And we will see you all later.